What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes. TGIF. TGIF, I love me Friday. It's Friday morning, November. I wanna say it's the 9th or 10th. One of those miserable days. On a, at a commercial building in Valley Stream. And a customer has one, two, three, four rooftop units, but we have multiple tenants here. And I, as I pulled up in front of the building and I set up my ladder, the gentleman comes outside and uh, starts puffing on a cigarette. And he goes, are you here to fix my heat? I sure am. And without having the landlord here yet, because we're a little bit early, a good technician is aware of his surroundings and using your eyes can open you to a world of possibilities. Just like this carrier unit right here. It's a weather maker. Should be called a comfort maker. Oh, but that's already a brand. And we can look at our faded sticker. Eh, you can get some numbers right there, maybe. But what I want to point out here is that gas cock right there. Come on, zoom in, baby. See that? She's off. Why is she off? That's the million dollar question. Ladies and gentlemen, this little segment of the video is directed to the ones who are in the HVAC trades. You know, uh, as for plumbing, you know, they say that, you know, we protect the, the health of the nation, right? And we provide, you know, sanitary conditions inside homes, inside buildings, you know, running water, being able to wash your hands after you take a dump on the toilet. You know, the, the porcelain god that sometimes we pray to when we drank too much. I'm sure we've all been there. <laughs> However, in the HVAC world, right, we're also protecting the health of a nation. And let me show you how. Here is that said carrier, weather maker, indoor, sorry, <laughs> rooftop unit, packaged gas rooftop unit. I removed the, I didn't turn anything off yet. I haven't touched anything other than this unit and just to take the covers off. I removed the, the front door right there with a bunch of screws. And then I went to the lower compartment below the blower assembly to expose the heat exchanger. And ladies and gentlemen, exposes what we did. We have a crack there, multiple cracks there, cracks there, cracks there. And if we look on the other side, let me get you in there. There's more there. There's more there where that came from. We have a failed heat exchanger. And uh, that's probably the reason why the gas is off. If it's not the reason why the gas is off, well, I just saved the lives of those who occupy this structure. Because if the system runs, there is a risk of carbon dioxide exposure, which is silent killer. You can't see it, smell it, taste it. It's invisible, okay? And by having a cracked heat exchanger, like you have sometimes on residential systems, it's not as easy to, to see and diagnose and confirm, right? Like a rooftop unit. This is one of the reasons why I love, love, absolutely love working on rooftop units. I wish I could work on rooftop units all day long. I love it. But the reason for this system to be condemned by me, right? I'm actually going to disconnect the gas. But the reason why this is disconnected is because we're saving their lives. All those cracks and that heat exchanger, right? No bueno. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens. At least here, I can see, I think that's the mile number, okay? They disconnected the W wire here, and I bet you it was probably on W2. Sorry about that. Um, cut for occupancy, interesting. There's our control board. Here's our furnace control or the heating control, ignition control module, spark igniter, evident by this black doodad right there. Um, yeah, so I guess they were using it for cooling and disabled it from heating by having the gas off and the W wire, which would be the heating circuit uh, from the thermostat. Uh, let's see what happens. All right, let's go to W2. Oh, 
nothing. I wonder if power's even on here. Well, very, very loud in Dusa. Very, very loud. Yep. Got flame. Wait for that blower to kick on. Just what I was a little, what I was a little skeptical about is I'm looking at each one of the, you know, the, the uh, panel screws, and none of them look like they were even taken off. So I was like, oh. you know, did they even open this? But then when I saw the burn marks out of the side, I Yeah. Wait for that blower to kick on. There it goes. Yeah. All right. She runs. Oh, she's not terribly old. You know, if she was an R22 system, it would be it would be cost effective to uh, to replace it. But it's an R410A system. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to do a quick little follow up. Uh, it's still Friday. It's still November 10th. Uh, still 2023, except it's 12:17 in the afternoon. Um, I got the quote from CE Northeast on the parts. Quite ex extensive of a list from. Sensors, igniters, regulator kits to silicone gaskets and, of course, the heat exchanger uh, to the sum of thousands upon thousands of dollars, factoring in tax and then labor. This becomes a very, very expensive uh, repair uh, versus the replacement of the entire unit, uh, which also comes with a hefty price. Uh, great thing, though, is the parts are available at Carrier and I'll have everything I need on Tuesday. And hopefully, within a total of four or five days, this system will be up and running. Thank God, though. Thank God it's not the middle. It is not the middle of the winter, and this becomes an emergency instead of an urgency. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well. God bless. Stay safe. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. There's no cost or obligation. And if you subscribe and you let me know, you send me an email, I even send you a free pipe doctor pen. Yeah, it says Mikey Pipes on it. You see that? So if you subscribe right now and you email me, Mike at MikeyPipes.com, I will send you a free pen. A free pen. That's how much I love you. So do it now. If you're not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. There you go.